go. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wokey, and I'm here with Zenrut. Hello. And what's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a show in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves to watching all anime available to us in English in some form. Uh, translated, not actual. In if it was actually dubbed, that would be great, because then we'd have to watch the... Uh, the uh, the great dubbing of Tree of Might for Dragon Ball. <laughs> <laughs> the big green dub. Oh, no. Oh. Not the big green dub. <laughs> it's big green. <laughs> Leave that child alone. That's for a later no, it's, day. No, it's, it's let that child let alone. Let that child alone. Let that child alone. Stare at the fireball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other great things. But yeah, eventually we will get to that someday. And we plan to do this until either one of us goes away or the universe itself ceases to exist. We'll see which one happens first, everyone. Crazy At days. At the rate we're going, I don't know. <laughs> At the rate we're going, who, it can be hard to tell. But yeah, starting off with Gintama, as is, is our big one going forward. And the two other ones we'll be covering every other week are uh, Kuroko's Basketball and Jujutsu Kaisen. So we're, let's get started by talking about Gintama Zen. Are you ready? Because today we're going to be talking about episodes 93, 94, and 95. Oh, yeah. Oh, These yeah. were... This is this is definitely the worst one of the three that we've watched. Yeah, very... <laughs> un <laughs> this, one's, this one's very much a nothing episode, but yeah. yeah. We'll, uh, it's a huge... So, it's a, it's a Valentine's Day special. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the title of it, it even has a hero has issues. Mm -hmm. There you go. Go ahead. Tell us what it's about, Zen. So there is a, a report that it's becoming difficult to get chocolate. Um, Kagura doesn't like know what it is, so she's asking about it. And Gintoki and Shimpachi are obviously like acting different. Like I think Gintoki's in like a really nice suit. He's got like slicked back hair. Yeah. Um, and Shimpachi's in like he's in like a edgy like tough guy outfit. I think. Yeah, like a rocker. <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, um. I was like, you guys are you guys are doing this, and I'm like, nah, no, nah, we're not doing anything. <laughs> um, and then someone knocks at the door, uh, and they get excited, thinking that chocolate is for them, because in Japan, remember, um, Valentine's Day is girls to the boys, and then I think it's White Day that is uh, yeah, White Day. Yeah, this 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 is a Japanese tradition in which on uh, Valentine's Day the women give chocolate to men, and then on a White Day that's when the men who receive chocolates. Uh, give them a gift, which I feel is like really like offsetting the balance because they get chocolate, and then the men, it, there is no limit on what they can give. <laughs> they can give whatever they <laughs> can just give anything. Yeah, yeah. There's not like they give them back. In, in uh, Harvest Moon, you gave them back cookies. <laughs> I, that's how I know this tradition because I always was like, I can't wait for these uh, town women to start giving me some chocolate, and it <laughs> took a very long time for any of them to give me anything. <laughs> It's like this is some straight bullshit, but yeah, that's how it goes typically. It's it's in Japan. It's different from over here, where both men and women, in theory, give stuff on Valentine's Day. Uh, actually, I don't know if they do that to strangers anymore. Do they? Do you know? Well, they have they have the obligation chocolates or whatever, where they like they give you a chocolate if they just, just like because they it's pity <laughs> chocolate basically. It's like if you're homies. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Yeah, it's I it's guess. homie. We need I can't to think of any guy that would want like homie chocolate. Oh come know. on, we need I to normalize be... men and women giving homie chocolate. <laughs> we need I'm just to... saying on the same holiday. Oh, really, for you love, can't just do it another time. All right, fair enough. <laughs> that that's very fair. I'll give you that. Imagine how confusing that must be if you get chocolate and then you're like, "Fuck, is this homie chocolate or is this <laughs> is this not?" Actually, you're right. There does cause a little bit. Maybe you so, need a some mixed messages there. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But I feel like any time in like anime or something, whenever the women give homie chocolate, it's always like very small. It's always like, here you go. <laughs> this yeah, this little tiny thing. I gave you like a Reese's Pieces. I think that's good enough for homie chocolate. It's, I feel like that's the difference. It's like, oh, okay. I think I understand. It'd be a shame if a man got a Reese's Pieces and he's like, obviously this woman is down for me. No, it's homie chocolate, I'm afraid. But I see your point. Uh, we can continue from here on. <laughs> now that we've had, feel free to tell us how you feel about the act of receiving homie <laughs> yeah, chocolate. About homie chocolate, yeah. Give us the the news on how you like the homie chocolates. Yeah, tell uh. me. <laughs> and if you're a woman, have you given out homie chocolates? Tell us how yeah, that experience are you, was. Are you part of uh, 
big chocolate. Exactly. Only chocolate agenda. <laughs> I'm real. I'm, I'm never gonna stop calling them Omi chocolates from now on. <laughs> All right. Um, so eventually they they're like, oh, someone's knocking at the door. It's obviously chocolate for us, and it's just like a bill collector. It's like wants money. <laughs> yeah. Um, Gas bill. And they're pissed off, and then all of a sudden a giant piece of chocolate falls through the roof, and they're like, what the fuck? It's got to be for one of us because they're so desperate to get attention. Turns out it's for Space Woman who is just mm-hmm. Ultraman, but a woman from space. Yeah. Um, she says it's hers. And then she gets cited by the cops for flying under the influence. She was, <laughs> she was like, very drunk. Drunk, drunk flying. Um, turns out her uh, her profession is to be like a hero. Um, and then she has the, the, this gem on her forehead where it flashes every three minutes. Uh, and she has to call her mom every three minutes, <laughs> <laughs> or else something bad happens. Um, uh, and then a giant monster lands. Who's what is his name? Uh, it's Colonel, Colonel Cherry. Cherry. Colonel Cherry lands and starts attacking. And uh, Space Woman uh, is there and reveals that she's a spinster. She's almost forty and she's alone. Um, she's been protecting the universe for so long that she never fell in love. Um, she was in a relationship with her boss, but her boss was still married. He claimed he was getting divorced, but that's not true. Um, in the and end. then uh, <laughs> she's uh, going to go like confess to Colonel Cherry. I think that they, she's, like, in love with him? Yeah, so what ended uh, up happening was that um, she was going to fucking Ultraman beam that man's family to death to cause the divorce, but they were too happy, so she didn't do it. And then she went into, like, a spiral of debauchery where she just started having sex with a bunch of kaijus. That's the implication here, and then at her lowest part... <laughs> Uh, in her lowest, uh, f- uh, in her lowest of lows, when she was drunk at like the call time for the bar, that's where she met Colonel Cherry, who was also at the bar, and she realized that they are the same. They were both close to forty and did not have anyone, <laughs> and that's <laughs> that's the reason why she likes Colonel Cherry, <laughs> which is a- <laughs> so. Uh, eventually, the superior who uh, she had like the the fling with also appears. And he's like, yeah, I, I got divorced. Look at my divorce papers. Um, but she turns him down. And then um, she gets a call from her mother. And the mom's like, oh, your dad's dying and wants a grandchild. And then the dad's like, no, that's that's okay. I just want you to be happy. <laughs> so now she's, like, sitting there on the phone. Um, and then eventually, uh, Gintoki gives her relationship advice. And so she chooses to be with Colonel Cherry. Colonel Cherry has no idea what the fuck's going on. Um, and then she, he, like, hits her. He's like, all right, let's fight. And he hits her, and she does, like, the anime girl, like, ah, thing where yeah. she, like, blushes. And then uh, he, she ends up destroying Colonel Cherry. She she defeats him to save the day. And then she calls her mom again, and she's like, I'm, I've protected the universe. <laughs> yeah so that was this was after a long like hallucination of going back until high school days and it they this is such a crazy long setup because the entire idea is that she never had the she doesn't have the strength of a high school girl willing to confess her <laughs> love to someone because now she's too old for it but when she does she eventually gets cut uh, um, goaded on by the women, she gives a bunch of chocolate, and when she confesses to the general, uh, to the colonel, he goes like, "This is kind of embarrassing," and she fucking frame one destroys him, <laughs> <laughs> and then it ends on a, "Oh yes, I saved the universe," and then it just kind of ends. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so this episode, um. I really like the beginning part of it, where it was like a uh, parody of the very first Ultraman. I'm a big fan of uh, this of Ultraman. Of not sp- funny enough, I haven't seen Ultraman, but I see a bunch of like the uh, Toku Toku stuff. So I have it in me to <laughs> I have the capacity in me to really love Ultraman, but I've never actually sat down and watched Ultraman. But I remember 
when I was watching on my sister's TV, there was a commercial for Ultraman, and me and my brother were watching it, and all this stuff was happening, and I said, this looks fucking awesome, and he's like, yeah, it's Ultraman, <laughs> you would love this. <laughs> yeah, it does seem like Ultraman would be right up your alley. He's right. So I did enjoy that. Uh, I like it whenever they kind of parody anything. I also liked it when they did it, it was to tell you to, hey, stay away from the screen. <laughs> like, they were doing the... Uh, yeah, the don't sit too close to the screen. Yeah, so that was very nice. Um, this episode's really weird because it really kind of hinges on the fact of like how much, <laughs> how much humor can you take from this thirty-seven-year-old woman and be calling yeah, her too I, old? It's it's really like how funny do you find uh, adult loneliness? <laughs> yes, and for the most part, I did, when they were going like crazy over the top with it like when they when she's <laughs> when she's it because he keeps doing this like ultraman like um sound effect which is the actual which is similar to the um sound effect that ultraman does i think she goes duk, josh, duk, josh, or something like that she goes like duk, 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 something like that and um there's a part where when she's talking to her boss and they're having this big confessional thing he does like a Duck, 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 duck. And it cuts to her, she's going, duck, 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 duck. It's very, <laughs> it's very silly, but I thought that was really funny. Um, I like that when she was denying the uh, the adulterer man. First of all, it's really funny because Kagura makes a very good point. It was like, if he can't commit to his, <laughs> to his family, then how do you expect him to commit to you? <laughs> Which is funny because it's Kagura. Yes, it is. But she was out here defending this woman. She's like, she's fully understanding what the situation is. She's down with it. She's like, listen, honey, you can do better. I know you say you're 37 and you're, bi- you're past your years, but you can still do better. <laughs> and how she denies him is that she fucking puts him in a spin hold and fucking launches him into the space. Yeah, she like tosses him into the fucking moon. Yeah. And both Shinpachi and Gitoki are like, don't weren't you a little bit harsh? She's like, what do you mean? <laughs> He's like, never mind, no, no, no. Perfect. <laughs> That's the way to do it. So, yeah, other than that, it's a, it's a very, like, sit back and just kind of, like, watch yeah, it it's, experience it's a, happen. It's a go-with-the-flow episode, for sure. There's not a lot in here. No. It's 100% predated, presidented? No, I'm not using the Predicated? Right predicated, thank you very much. On how <laughs> funny do you think it is to... Uh, just kind of downbeat this woman. Which is weird, because I have no problem with downbeating someone like Hasegawa, but for some reason with a woman, it feels slightly meaner. I don't know. It Because, it like, it, I, I don't know, maybe it's just uh, internalized misogyny from the youth of, like, you gotta be nice to girls. That's true. But, like, with Hasegawa, it's like, uh, it, it feels less like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? less uh mm-hmm. gender motivated like hasagawa i mean they call him like a useless old man and stuff yeah but they're never like oh you're you're past your uh effective sell-by date as a <laughs> human that's fair that that maybe that's a lot of it but to be fair maybe it's something that's more like talked about in japan where it's like it's a bigger issue for them over there you know different cultural things here though i think we also do that thing too don't we like ship off our spinster uh, is a european term i think really? isn't it is it? I think so. Because, it's, yeah, it's in all those old, like, Jane Austen novels and stuff. It's like, oh, you got to marry your daughters off by, like, 20, or they're not appealing anymore. Okay, that's fair enough. The, the only thing I know is that in America, actresses disappear when they're 30, and then they come back when they're 50 to play the funky grandma. That's basically <laughs> the, the, the extent that I know of what we do to women past the age of <laughs> 20. But that's all I know. Oh, I also really did like the bit about her calling her mom because it reminded me of my sister. Because my sister also does the same thing. <laughs> where it's Because at one point it's uh, she talks and she's like, it really does seem like your mom is just like on call for whatever you're doing. And my mom is similarly always on call for when my sister is. <laughs> so I thought that was a good touch. Uh, and yeah. I th- you know, enjoyable. For a Valentine's Day episode, it works. If this was on Valentine's yeah. Day and I'm watching. Yeah. Makes a little bit more sense. Uh, I really like the joke when the dad is like terminally ill, and the mom is like, "Oh, if only you had a child already." <laughs> yeah, you have two. I also like that you only has two years left. Yeah, guilt's the guilt's her with the death of her father. 
<laughs> two years is plenty of time for her to potentially get down and do it. I also do like that when she's getting, when they show her at her worst and she's saying, like, I got basically got down with a bunch of kaijus, Shinpachi's like, what terms of fighting are you doing? Because she's like, I learned how to use my beams in a completely different way. And he's like, Why, where are you going with this? <laughs> Please stop! And they show like a a flower on the table as a single petal falls down, <laughs> just to show her how bad she is <laughs> in her current state. Again, it is funny. It's just like in a completely different way <laughs> from something like Asagawa. Again, if you are an actual lady, tell us how you feel about this. Yeah. It would be interesting to hear from another side, but yeah, for the most part, I enjoyed it. Also, it is really funny to me that the next one is Pascal. <laughs> yeah, it's very much of similar dealings with uh, a person, much older person that we don't. How actually do we know how old? Yeah, well, he's old. <laughs> he's old. Was yeah. old. Old man. Very old man. But yeah, anything else you have to say about this episode, then? Uh, no. It, like I said, it was pretty much a nothing episode. It was. It. It is what it was. Hmm. Just one of those episodes where you're like, okay. They're, yeah, it's for Valentine's They're, they're goofing. Day. They're new boot goofing. It's fine. Yeah, all good. So let's move on to episode 94, which is called, When Riding a Train, Make Sure You Grab the Strap with Both Hands. <laughs> uh, so, episode 94. Oh, uh, wait, 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 wait. I just episode. remembered. Oh, wait, from the previous episode, at one point, Gintoki gives a speech about how love can be found anywhere, and his main example is how Goku found himself being married, and he says, like, perhaps even the offer, as well as Goku, didn't expect him to get married. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, he was like, perhaps even they didn't think it was gonna happen. <laughs> but it happens anyway. I just thought that was really funny. It, uh, <laughs> it's whatever anyone brings up, like, yeah, I guess Goku does just kind of get married. <laughs> Out of nowhere. Okay, now you can go on. I had to mention that. Any mention of Goku, I'm good for. All right, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so episode 94 uh, is a Hasegawa episode. It's a two-parter. Um, Hasegawa finally got a job, and it starts with him on the train with... Or, or no, no, he's calling his wife first. Mm -hmm. And he's like, um, you know, oh, I uh, I got a job, and she's all excited. Um and he's like, you know, if if this job works out and like I get back on my feet, do you think that we could get back together? And then as he says that, um, a man walks in to the room the wife is in, and she hangs up the phone on him. Um, and so he hires Gintoki to go and investigate if his wife is quote unquote cheating on him, even though they're separated. They're not technically divorced. Yeah, he hasn't signed the papers. Yeah, he didn't sign the divorce papers. So. Um, they're like on the train and he's all dressed up in his suit and he's like having this talk with Gintoki and he's like you know Gintoki says you know what leave this leave this part of your life to me man and you go do your best to stay on your feet and he's like I will and they do like this slow shot where Hasegawa is walking away and he's walking off the tram and Gintoki's still there and he says like under his breath like uh you can do it or so I don't remember what he says but he says like don't, don't mess, mess it up, up or yeah. something yeah and Hasegawa like holds his hand up in the crowd and does a thumbs up and immediately trips getting <laughs> off of the train and stumbles all the way into oncoming traffic, like the, the oncoming train. And he tries to stop himself and he grabs this woman's arm to, to try to like stabilize himself, but it doesn't work. And he ends up pulling them both in front of this train. Uh, and it misses them just barely as he lands on the ground doing the Kaniku buster on her. <laughs> And then, and then he's immediately arrested uh, for what they call the Kaniku Buster molestation case. <laughs> um, Hasekawa's like having a meltdown about how like, oh, he's got no one left in the world anymore and he just wants to kill himself and Gintoki punches him through the, the visitor glass. Um, and he's like, we're your fucking friends. And then he ends up throwing down, like, a porn DVD. And he's like, if we weren't friends, would I let you borrow this? <laughs> and that's when Hasegawa realizes that they all don't believe him. They all think that he did it on purpose. To the point where Kintoki's like, Kagura, don't get too close. He's dangerous. Perfect. <laughs> and then, uh, 
they leave eventually, um, and Gintoki gives him the envelope that that's like with the PI work he did on his wife. Um, and then another man walks in and wants to visit with him, and it turns out that he is the prosecutor who is uh, also dating his wife. And so he's like, you know, if you fill out the divorce papers and you divorce your wife, uh, I'll let you win the case. I'll, I'll throw the case and I'll let you li win. If you don't, I will mention that you were ordered to commit seppuku and you ran away, and then you'll be executed on the spot. So um, Hasegawa's all, like, freaking out. And uh, Gintoki comes back to visit, and Hasegawa's like, oh, you know, I, uh, I'm i going to take the deal, I think, because he's right that I'm no good, and I'm holding my wife back, and uh, obviously I don't want to die. So, And then Gintoki gives him a package that was from the wife, because um, she stopped by and visited them. And this uh, steeled Hasegawa, he's ready to, to face the charges. The uh, allegations. The Buster. Yeah, he's ready to face <laughs> down the Kaniku Buster molestation allegations. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and then it ends with the reveal that Kentucky is there to be his uh, lawyer, right? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. It ends with the reveal. They're in the, the court, and they're like, "Where's the defense attorney?" And the guy's like, oh, I don't know, maybe something happened on the way here. And then Kintoki walks in and, like, pushes his glasses up in a very anime-esque <laughs> style. And he's like, I'm Sakata, the attorney. And no frames in the glasses either. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really funny. All right, and that's the first part of the uh, the, prosecu the Hasegawa prosecution arc is, I think, what these two episodes... The Hasegawa prosecution arc, yeah, these two episodes are what they're called. Um, <clears throat> so... Man, there's a lot to love in this one. So I really like the intro beginning here where it's like kind of like, I don't, I forget what they call it. I would have called it an animatic, but it might be a little bit more detailed than that. Where there's no animation, it's like the storyboard. Uh, and they're like completely in like no, like Kintoki wakes up, he's like, I'm white for some reason. And then Kakura's like, why are you white? He's like, you're white too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, because they're like, uh, why, um, if we're not colored in. Yeah, we're not. We and don't there's have a anything. whole a whole drama where they're like, "Oh, the, the, they we did, we're behind schedule. We didn't fill any of this shit in." And Gintoki's like, "Who? Tell me who did this? I'm gonna get him fired." And then he goes, "It was the director." <laughs> <coughs> I really like that. That bit was really good. Um, it has nothing to do with the arc, but it actually kind of does. Sometimes we can uh, with Kintama, I feel like I think maybe they legitimately did forget, but this had to have been on purpose because there's even a part where like they stop having detail. He's like, "What? My detail's gone. I don't even know who's who anymore." Yeah, but, like you can't even tell who's who, <laughs> which is really funny. Um, the beginning of this one, uh, Hasegawa. It was good to see him try and get his life back together with his wife. We've seen his, him talk to his wife, so we know how much he cares and wants to get back with her. So now that he's thinking, like, oh, I can finally have a job and we can get back together, um, it's good to kind of see him in a positive <laughs> for as brief as it was. It was nice to see him being happy. Well, okay. So I didn't mention this, but in the beginning, when he's, like, talking about his job... Mm -hmm. um, He's like, oh, they'll let me wear sunglasses at work. And Kentucky's like, what What kind of job is this? And he's like, oh, don't worry. No one who wears sunglasses can be bad. And he's like, are you sure they don't wear sunglasses and sell white powder, meaning like drugs? And he's like, oh, yeah, they do that, actually. Oh, and they also <laughs> sell guns. So I'm pretty sure it was like the Yakuza he was going to work for. Yeah, it was a very shady job, which is why <laughs> Kentucky's like, I don't think you should go there. Yeah, Kentucky says, I think you should quit. He's like, ah, no, whatever, I'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, I like them having their conversation because the wife says, like, oh, we should go out and celebrate. And he says, uh, n let me work on it because I want to be the one to uh, buy the dinner and stuff like that. And before he, then he hangs up and he's like, oh, well, I don't know what's going on. And he hires him. But I really liked it. Of course, the thumbs up shot that he gives. This is also really nice because this is there's a lot of showing Gintoki actually legitimately does care about Hasegawa, even though he has continuously ruined his life. And it's really funny because when he says don't mess it up this time, it's funny because most of the time it is Gintoki ruining. <laughs> yeah, it's not even his fault. <laughs> no, it's not his fault. Um, <clears throat> and as it goes on, uh, this, this set of events that causes him 
to hit that woman with the Kaniku Buster is amazing because he doesn't only fall and then he goes there and then he's going to the train it looks like he's going to be able he picks up a fat uh woman as well she's very big so you think that he would have been able to like stop the momentum but it doesn't work at all i also think her lips also kind of look like kaniku man's but maybe i am just reading into it and that's how they just do big lady lips on <laughs> gintama but i thought it looked kind of yeah, like think, Man's. i think the the daughter the the fat joke daughter had big lips as well. All right, fair enough, fair enough. But I it reminded me of uh, Kaniku Man. Uh, but as he's going through this, and it ends with a Kaniku Buster, uh, and the way everyone looks at it, it's really funny because yeah, when you do a Kaniku Buster on a woman, and she's not wearing any, and she's like uh, not wearing she pants, like kimono, yeah. yeah, it does look very wrong. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, I'm a big fan of Kaniku Man, so anytime I can see the Kaniku Buster, or as it's called over here when someone does it, a muscle buster in America, because Kaniku is a uh, muscle, um, that was really fun. And I also like a lot of the stuff they go matching it later, but just enough to see the Kaniku Buster was good enough for me. Uh... <laughs> Also, how everyone just clearly says, it's the Kaniku Buster! It's the Kaniku Buster! Uh-huh. And, uh, and the entire, like, watching crowd. Yeah, and then the note is really funny, because it goes, Kaniku Man's trademark attack in one of his 48 killer moves from Ultimate Muscle, which is not accurate. Ultimate Muscle is fucking the sequel to Kaniku Man. Kaniku Man is, um... Ultimate Muscle is... I actually, you know what, I'll give him a fair on this one. But I'm always positive Ultimate Muscle is the one that is his son. And Kaniku Man's original uh, anime we never got over here, but most people would know Kaniku Man from Ultimate Muscle, the anime from Fox News that had the amazing theme song of Ultimate Muscle. Yes, I, I've seen that one. I haven't seen Kaniku Man. I've yeah. seen Ultimate Muscle. One day we're going to see one or two of those. I love both of them. Uh, apparently people in the West really like Ultimate Muscle, but in Japan it, they did not like it as much as original Kaniku Man. Well, Ultimate Muscle came out over here during that weird era of, like, Fox. food, uh, metabots, and, like, uh, the one where they made food monsters, fighting, fighting foodies, foodons, or whatever the fuck it was. Fighting, fighting foodons. foodons. Yeah. Fried racer! <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that was that era that Ultimate Muscle came out during all of that. Yeah. Oh, like also the, the post-Yu-Gi-Oh! crazy era yeah and also funny enough in the 80s um muscle which is the toy that's based off of uh kaniku man but when they were bringing it over they didn't because those toys in japan are just called kaniku man toys they changed it over here to muscle and muscle was more popular than kaniku man we never got kaniku man but we got the toys (laughs) which is really funny in the 80s uh, all this history and more coming to you when we finally cover Kaniku Man. I'm, I'm waiting for the day, salivating, waiting for it. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> let's move on. Uh, there's a really nice moment where he's like, Hasegawa says, like, we're basically total strangers to each other. And that's what gets Gintoki really angry and he punches him through glass. <laughs> Yeah, he punches him through the observation glass or whatever. Yeah, he's like total strangers. If I thought that, if I thought that, I wouldn't be here. Like he's he seems like actively angry, even when he's showing him. He's like, if I, if we were total strangers, I wouldn't even bother to know where they were keeping you. If we were total strangers, I wouldn't have brought this molest- this DVD for you. Yeah, this porn DVD for you. Which, now that I think about it, in the next episode, isn't that the? So later on, they show the DVD collection that he has, and he says, and some of these even mention molestation. Do you think that the one that <laughs> mentions molestation came from this bit right here? <laughs> well, no, because they got it from Hasegawa's house. Okay, fair enough. Um, I thought that would be funny uh, if that's how they got it, but, but no. Um, well, maybe he could still. He traded tapes with Kentucky. You never know. Um... The, he has guy was just really depressed whenever i try to grab happiness it runs away and i was like damn he's right he's right for that <laughs> he's real <laughs> the most <laughs> depressed man at all of gintoki uh there's also a really nice bit where every time um gintoki comes to visit him he asked him um did you bring the rope to say like so i can hang myself and then he goes like the first time he goes like no that didn't it wasn't available at the store and he goes like, no, I couldn't find the right brand. And then on the third time, uh, 
when he's leaving, when Kentucky's leaving, he says, I have no intention of getting you a rope so you can hang yourself, but if it's rope that will pull you out of hell, then I'll bring you as many as you want. And I was like, damn! way too raw a line for something this stupid. Yes, for how stupid the situation <laughs> is for a man in a trial for a Kaniku Buster molestation case to say, I'm bringing you the rope but not kill yourself. All kings must stay living. <laughs> Yeah, I'm bringing you the rope to pull you out of hell. And it's the Kaniku Buster molestation <laughs> case. case. Pretty great. <laughs> it's um, fucking insane. It is. I like the kind of setup of this prosecutor guy as a complete asshole. I hated him throughout everything. Uh, even if at the end. But this intro of him being just an absolute smug bastard uh, was a good one for me. And yeah. And in the court of law... Uh, Oh no, this this following the next one. But yeah, I thought it was a good setup for what's to go on, and I cared about seeing Hasegawa. I think they mention at some point Shimpachi says like no one has more guts than Hasegawa, but then Kagura says like I don't know if you've seen him lately, but he doesn't really seem like that guy anymore. Like I guess yeah, he's, at, he's down, he's down and out. Yeah, he's he's really down and out, which actually has been building up to this, which is true. Is that every time we've seen him, he's gotten successfully more depressed each time we've seen him so here at the end of his rope as he's trying to figure out um what to do next uh is nice and it's also nice that Kentoki realizes that he really badly needs someone there for him so that he's there for him i thought was very nice and very touching and yeah that's this episode for so far and we'll cover more on the other one but how do you do feel you, about do this you one? get the vibe that Kentoki like took out the attorney so that he could be the attorney Yes, I do have a feeling that's what it was. <laughs> is that is that the vibe you get from this? Because it's the vibe I get. Yeah, especially because the other guy got taken down because of sexual assault uh, things. Yeah, it was it was a molestation charge. Yes, it makes me a hundred percent feel like Gintoki <laughs> took that other guy <laughs> down. <laughs> Uh, because they don't ever bring up what happened to the other one, but I can almost guarantee you that's what happened. <laughs> How do you feel about the episode, Zen? Uh, it was good. It was really good. It was way too many like raw lines for something this stupid. Yeah. Um, I, I like the that somehow he saved them both from the train by landing the Kaniku Buster. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what happened. Um, and yeah. I like the the sleazy attorney. He's like the worst. I fucking hate that guy. Yes. Oh my god. Ha- Haga Kenji, I think, is his name. It is. We'll call him Haga. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he fucking sucks. Absolutely. Uh, and for some reason, I don't know why, the ending where Gintoki is revealed as the attorney actually got me kind of hype. I was like, oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> they treat it as a big thing. <laughs> yeah, it was like one of those moments where I was like uh, in Bleach when like Ichigo shows up at just the right moment. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah, Kentucky. This is his Goku arriving on Namek. <laughs> is it is, yeah, it's right. is Kentucky <laughs> showing up for a molestation case as a yeah, lawyer? It's, uh, it's when um, it's when the flying Nimbus catches Gohan right before <laughs> Nappa squishes him. Oh, uh, it's like when Gara shows up to save Rock Lee before he gets smoked. <laughs> <laughs> god damn it you're 100 percent right that is exactly what this is it is one of those moments it is one of these moments and it, it had the same impact on me yeah <laughs> of just like oh no all is lost and then the hero's right there you're like yes we're back in but it's <laughs> for the kaniku buster molestation case Oh man, this oh, this, this <laughs> series is so amazing. <laughs> really, it really, I fucking love Kitama. I know. I'm so glad we're talking about it again. Let's move on to the next episode, episode 95. Men be a madio, or how do you say you pronounce it? Ma- madao. Ma- madao. Perfect. <laughs> which which is what they call him because he's a useless old man. That's what that means, apparently. Yes, it does. <laughs> uh so they're at the trial um and 
they start arguing about um, the Kaniku Buster, like the specifics of the Kaniku <laughs> no, Buster. I loved every single moment of this. I didn't take a single <laughs> screenshot because there's no so way for me to do it. Fucking funny. Because um, they were like, okay, well, you know, this case is um, molestation. And Kentucky's like, oh, it could have been an accident. And the, the prosecutor goes, how, how could you possibly do a move as difficult to pull off as the Kaniku Buster on accident? Um, and then Kentucky, what, Kentucky goes, oh, but the Kaniku Buster was originally done to, to def- uh, defeat super to villains. defeat villains. And I, I can't genuinely believe that uh, Kaniku Man had lewd intentions <laughs> of creating the Kaniku Buster. Therefore, you can't possibly consider it a form of molestation. And then they start arguing back and forth that he's like, it shouldn't even be called the Kanika Buster. It should be called the Hasegawa Buster. Uh, <laughs> because in the series, even though it was created by Kaniku Man, it was taught to him by someone else. And the judge is like, upheld. We'll call oh, it the Hasegawa <laughs> Buster from now on. It's, oh, this bit is so good. Especially because <laughs> he argues like, um... <laughs> the, the no matter whoever's doing the move it should be called the Kaniku Buster and then Kitoki raises another fight. he's like another objection I just wanted to be made clear whenever he was taught it and whenever someone else did it it would be called them Buster and then the judge is like I'll allow it <laughs> and it's, yeah. I was just, just like yeah <laughs> oh. objections in but this is so good for so many reasons because when it started when he started then been like um <laughs> they basically got the perfect person to argue for a Kaniku man <laughs> because he was like, who would know the intricacies of Kaniku man? It would be Gintoki, who is a huge Shonen Jump fan. <laughs> he had a jump obsessed. And he knows so much. And I was like, as I was saying, I was like, damn, he's fucking spinning. He's right. <laughs> he's what the fact check. He's right about this. <laughs> oh, it was so good. And he, <laughs> it was so amazing. <laughs> All right, well, I'll talk more about it, but yeah, continue on. That's what they do here at the beginning. That's the start of this episode. Um. So then, uh, the he's like, "Where's your evidence that that this was molestation? You don't, you don't have any evidence." And he's like, "Oh, we searched the defendant's house and we got all these porno DVDs." <laughs> and Kentoki objects again, and he says, "Oh, we have to um, we have to watch these to determine the validity <laughs> of them." <laughs> and Natsuka was like, oh my god, you just want to watch them. And the, the prosecutor's like, I object, that's pointless. And then the judge goes, no, we have to. <laughs> <laughs> so they're all sitting at this, like, couch watching these. And the prosecutor's complaining. And then he goes, wait, objection. Rewind that footage back to the spanking. <laughs> and the judge goes, Upheld. Also, <laughs> play it in slow motion. Slow motion. <laughs> Dude, I fucking died when he said do it in it slow motion. So funny. Yeah, he goes, play it back in slow, slow motion. motion. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, they, they get back and Gintoki... Or the judge sides with him that there's not enough, um, that, that you can't use his, like, porn collection as evidence. And then Nasukawa realizes it's just because the judge has even more porn than yeah. he did. Because <laughs> he says, uh, when they say, he's like, well, any man would have a, a any obsession. Any man has some, yeah. <laughs> but then the other guy is like, I feel like 30 is a little bit too much, <laughs> which is completely <laughs> fair. <laughs> and then the judge immediately goes, no. It's fine. <laughs> He's that yeah that they accuse him of having more than thirty. Um, and so then Gintoki goes to get the case dismissed, and the the prosecutor pulls out a DVD of episode ninety two of Gintama <laughs> when Gintoki is peeping on that girl from the turtle episode. Oh my god! <laughs> He's like, we can't possibly, um, we. Can't can't possibly trust a, a pervert attorney to defend a pervert. They're in league together. And then Hasegawa's been having these hallucinations the whole time of this girl trying to drag him into a ravine. Of, of Heidi, which is a... Yeah. Which apparently there was an anime version of Heidi made at some point, which is where all these references are coming from. <laughs> so... um. Gintoki gets added to that as another character from Heidi. 
Yeah, the goat. Um, yeah. And then they're, they're falling down the cliff, and as Gintoki starts defending himself from the, uh, the peeping allegations, <laughs> he's kicking Hasegawa, and he's like, nah, <laughs> the, the ship has sailed, I'm defending myself now. <laughs> or you're on, on your own. Um, and then Gintoki snaps, and he goes, don't compare me to this guy. And points at Hasegawa. <laughs> Um, and then Hasegawa decides to point out that Haga, uh, tried to buy him off, that he, you know, committed, a some sort of, uh, violation to try to get him to agree to this deal in exchange for his wife. Uh, Hasegawa argues that's untrue, or not, no, I'm sorry, uh, Haga argues that's untrue and they can't prove it. And his evidence is the fact that, um, Hasegawa's life, wife loves him instead. And then Kagura and Shimpachi come in with a bunch of photos of him. He's like a uh, like a playboy. He's like with a bunch of different women yeah. all the time. And they use these photos to disprove that he loves her specifically. And he argues that, oh, you know, those are just friends. I'm actually in love with her. Um, and so Gintoki raises again. And he says that that just means that the love is one-sided. Um, so can you can you prove that she loves you? And then Gintoki proves that she was there to support Hasegawa. But, um, and so the judge hands down the verdict that uh, he's guilty of upsetting his wife and he needs to go reconcile with her. Um, and as he's running out, he falls down the stairs that, that she's at the bottom of and he immediately tries to grab her and he lands a Kaniku Buster on her as well. Hasegawa Buster, as the court of law has <laughs> known. <laughs> the Hasegawa Buster. <laughs> It ends on a super detailed Hasegawa Buster. Also, there was like a Shinpachi and Kagura were there with like a thing said like you be not guilty or something like <laughs> to congratulate him. Immediately are extremely disappointed in him <laughs> when he, they see him doing the Hasegawa Buster on his wife. <laughs> uh, I also like that the the judge also declared that the DVD tapes are going to be kept with him. <laughs> yeah, he's going to keep them all for evidence. It's like, what? Did you really want him that badly? <laughs> it also was revealed that the reason that um, Haga never revealed that um, Hasegawa was told to commit uh, seppuku is because he wanted to try and he was actually legitimately in love with uh, his wife, and he wanted to actually try it in an honorable way of trying getting it. So that's why he doesn't mention it at the end, because that was always the ace in the hole that um, was going to get him to win anyway. Yeah, no, would... what he said, uh, it, you should win with genuine, like, ability. Uh, yeah. I didn't want to cheat. But so he and then up... he reveals that even though they were dating, that she never really uh, gave him much of a real chance anyway. Yeah. So it really was nothing. Nothing between them. And then we get a preview for the next episode, which is uh, something to do with Umabozo. He'll be back. Yes, so, he will be. Yes. So this episode... Oh, uh, man. So, obviously, that opening bit of them doing the court of law. First of all, Kentucky is an amazing lawyer because he's a TV lawyer. He's basically saying objection to anything. Yeah, literally everything that the guy says, Kentucky just objects to it. Yes, he always starts it with an objection. And it's amazing every single time. Also, like, for his final objection when he catches them in the thing about... Um, dating his wife and that they're in love with each other. The Heidi bit, which they're getting eaten. They were eaten by Heidi, and then they out popped him in a shining beam of light. His wheelchair, the, uh, Heidi's wheelchair bound sister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he has like a giant glow around him as he says, like, oh yeah, and he proves him wrong. Amazing. Uh, obviously, the bit here was super funny. I loved every single bit of the Kaniku Man arguments going back and forth. It's it's also really funny when they put they bring into evidence uh, the Kaniku Buster. They bring in a manga panel <laughs> of the Kaniku Buster. Yeah, of like the actual Kaniku Buster. Yeah, which is really funny. Um, the entire back and forth is also great because there's no cutaway gags. It's literally feels like two people having a legit argument over Shonen Jump trivia. <laughs> Or trying to prove it. It was uh, great. I loved every second of it. Uh, when they start watching the tapes, fucking great. 
that bit where he says, like, look at all these tapes that he has. He has so many of them. And I think he starts, uh, no, this is the next bit. But yeah, when they watch it and they're all like, they enjoy it and they all have a nosebleed, it was also really funny. Um, when he brings up the episode 92 of Gintama was also great because I was like, holy shit. I thought this was when they were going to bring up the whole, uh, commit seppuku thing but no it was episode 92 which i wasn't expecting when they showed like kintoki people yeah. on a woman and then he's like oh you you didn't see that episode <laughs> said, wait for the dvd <laughs> we get you that and uh he starts he turns the crowd against them he's like yeah get both these perverts out of here <laughs> both of them should be gone and then finally when he proves the with the wife's love we didn't mention it in the last episode but the wife does show up um, for a brief bit just because she couldn't get in contact with Hasegawa so she went to Gintoki to deliver off something to him and then we reveal for the speech that Gintoki gives what he got was a new suit for the trial um, that was what she brought to Hasegawa uh, but he didn't put it on because in the story that Gintoki talks about he talks about someone who was too proud um, he was going to go to his first job, but he didn't want to go in a suit that his wife bought him, so he didn't go in it. He went in his uh, samurai outfit, and he ended up getting fired because of it. And he went to go... He Then he was so ashamed, he went to go put on the suit and go apologize, but his wife had already beaten him there. And the wife was like in, a, in like a rag clothing, even though begging for her husband's job, even though they were both... Even though she came from a higher stature, she was still basically doing... Um, she was begging for his job and the husband got so like irate with what was happening. He cut up his suit by the ankles and then he joined his wife in the same way and they both begged for his job. Uh, and then he reveals like the suit has gone through a lot of different alter like alterations over the years and it can't even fit him. And that's how the, how the suit the Hasegawa is wearing to the court itself. That I think in the last episode they made fun of no in the beginning of the other episode they made fun of him because he said your suit doesn't even go all the way down to your feet like there's something wrong with it which they mentioned in the previous episode so then they reveal like this is the big backstory around this suit why it's like that and then he Gintoki passes off the uh, he froze the thing that the wife gave him and he says like your husband's very stubborn about what he wants and then he tells her he couldn't get him to put on the suit <clears throat> and she it's revealed that she's there in trial with the same outfit that she had to beg for his job previously probably there to beg for his life again if it came down to it uh, that's the implication I got from it anyway, is that as to why she was wearing the exact same clothing from last time. And I thought that was really nice, and it was a very well done emotional thing of trying to get trying to get the backstory of Hasegawa and his wife and how much they love each other, and of course it also gets followed up with him doing the Hasegawa buster on her <laughs> as he runs towards her. Yep. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, that's yeah, that's Kintama. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh -huh. this series yep. in a nutshell perfectly on brand so yeah i really this was a great two episode arc um i really loved it even if if you took out the fact that he was doing the kaniku buster and there was a lot of kaniku man references in general if it was any move i think i still would have liked it but i really liked the opening where they were where like they recapped the last episode Mm -hmm. And they were like, Hasegawa is accused of committing Kaniku Buster molestation. Incidentally, it's also the anniversary of Kaniku. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the perfect way to... <laughs> this is the kind of humor I would actually, like, fully, full on, like, they would appreciate that in Kaniku Man. I would say that's a positive. There you go. A well done reference to it. Only a case this stupid could actually reference Kaniku Man, a man who is equally that stupid. <laughs> so yeah, really well done. As I said before, I really like Hasegawa as a character, uh, and I feel like he's only gone up since then. <laughs> yeah, for every episode that they've used him in since. Yeah, he's always funny. I like Hasegawa. Yeah, so fantastic done here. Positive. Really good. Knocked it out of the park. Nothing more I can say. 10 on 10. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, also really good. Fantastic episode. Uh, I love how serious they play all of this. There's one cut. I love when they do animation gags in Gintama, where like they do like the really intense anime cuts for shit that doesn't matter. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, 
And they do, when they start throwing the pictures of the prosecutor to everyone, he turns with this, like, super detailed, uh, crazy eye look. Like, it looked like Frieza or something turning around to see Goku <laughs> transform. It was so fucking funny. That's pretty good. <laughs> I love when they do gags like that. Yeah, um, yeah no, it was a fantastic episode. Mm-hmm. Man, another two. It's crazy how much the singular focus episodes on a character are have been some of the best ones we've gone so far. Like the one with Okita's sister. Like just a simple two episode arc. But it introduces you the stuff, it gets you invested, and then the payoff is just amazing. It's kind of crazy that they were able to do it like two of those back to back. Yeah, I don't know how they managed to do that, but it's really good. Yeah, appreciate that. It's very, it's, I don't know, it's very rare for most um, arcs to just like be only two episodes, but yeah, no, it fits here, and it was a good ass time, so can't complain too much. Man. So that's it for this this week. So next week, we are going to hopefully do five episodes of Gintama. I've got my schedule down. I'm way busy with work now, but I think I finally got it. So I'm guaranteeing you five episodes next week for Gintama. I guarantee it. Knock on wood. And those episodes will be 96, 97, 98, 99, and 100. That's right, Zen. We've made it to episode 100 of Gintama. My God. Yes. We're, we're moving. Yeah. Only, schmoving. Schmoving. Only 269 more to go in a couple movies. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Also, it looks like we will have another arc for next week. Another 2-1 called the OE arc. We'll see how this one goes. Based off of the remarks I'm seeing on this wiki page, though, it seems like it would likely be another silly one. But that's perfectly fine with me. It happens. Yeah, you gotta you gotta break it up in Gintama. Yeah, you're exactly. never gonna get too many serious ones in a row. It seems. Oh yeah, and then episode. I'm looking forward to see what they would do for episode 100 as well. I'm sure they'll do something very in telling of the <laughs> of the series. And then funny. Enough, oh yeah, for sure. 100. percent And then after that, there's another there's another full big on arc actually because we will officially be hitting. With episode one, we will hit what they would consider season three, though most people consider that we are still in season one. For the most part, when it's airing inside the series itself, it would be considered a uh, season three. And the next five episodes are an entire arc in itself, and we'll cover that. So, a lot of good stuff to look forward to with Gintama Zen. The good times always, don't stop. Always. Anymore. Fucking love Gintama, man. Yeah, this was like, such a good decision. Yes, it was. <laughs> if Gem's Archive is worth anything, it's worth this. I can tell you that much. But yeah, that's it for uh, this episode of Shonen Archive. If you want some more Shonen Archive, may I suggest you other Shonen Archives of other Shonen Jump series. <laughs> yeah, we've got Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. We've got Chainsaw, uh, Chainsaw Man. Man. we got Kuroko showing up in maybe a day or two, depending on how I finish that editing of it. But it should be a day or two from here. And then next week, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen good stuff mm-hmm. all around expanding we al- yeah we're, we're growing the empire as it were yes we also have some other singular one takes off if you're on twitter and you're wondering damn why does zen hate dragon ball superhero so much we did an episode on that <laughs> with d <D-free>. sure did <laughs> we sure fucking did yeah you can Fuck. every single time i see you mention up <laughs> dragon ball superhero and someone goes like what i always feel like linking and you could find more out in this episode you <laughs> absolutely <laughs> We should, because that would be fucking hilarious. All right, I'll do that next time. We'll make Every sure. single time. Yeah. And then uh, the, another one, which is another one-off case, funny enough, is for the One Piece movie, because I went to go see that, and I talked to D Free about it. Zen's not on One Piece, and I couldn't find him an illegal copy to watch very quickly, so I figured I'll just talk to <laughs> D Free about it. No, I'm not on the One Piece train. Not yet. One day. We can't hide from it forever, Zen. <laughs> one day we're going <laughs> to have to... true. We'll have to do it here. <laughs> One of those days, that will be the most uh, insane... 7,000 episode series. Oh yeah, that will be a year long, like, us trying to do anything. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we still have to talk out. We still have to have a filler conversation, because One Piece also has anime filler in it. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, we'll have to have that conversation about Bleach, if we do Bleach as well. So. Yeah, yeah, which if... Yeah, yes, we we're, we're gonna have to talk about it. But yeah, if you want some more stuff featuring Zen, you can always go to Zen's channel, um, 
zenrado.zenrado.com on YouTube. <laughs> YouTube yeah, slash <laughs> zenrado.zenrado.com. Uh, you can check out his series that he does over there, Shonen and Chill. If you want some old Zen, you can check out his Kaioken video that he did. Dokkan's almost on his eighth year anniversary. I still get comments on that. You damn right, because that's the greatest Dokkan. <laughs> uh, no joke. <laughs> that Dokkan video is the definitive Dokkan video, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> like, no offense to truth to the people who to nano no offense to the people who helped us along the way like d free and rhyme and uh, living ichigo all those you made the definitive dokkan video with that <laughs> kaioken goku video and dokkan has no dokkan tuber has been able to ever follow it up in a significant way <laughs> i'm willing to say that it is what perhaps the greatest dokkan video ever made <laughs> I still, to this day, get comments on that video. Like, consistently. It's not like a random person once, like, every two years. It's like, every time I check Shonen and Chill comments, if there's, like, one in there. I'm like, I missed this video. <laughs> it's a banger. No doubt. You can check that one out, too. If you ever want, are interested in Zen's past, it's an amazing video. It still holds up to today. <laughs> the, <laughs> if anything, it's, it's become... well. It's only gotten funnier with time when Kaioken Goku has been made worse. I'm sorry, better. Has been made the god. The Kaio god. Uh, for my videos, you can go to my channel. Uh, and you uh, you know me. You you got, you got know my stuff. You can go check out my latest anything. I did a Fugo Summon video with my brother where I pulled the unit in like one multi. So we had the bullshit for like five minutes. So, obviously, that's some of the best stuff on the channel. <laughs> we we did an Audible sponsorship. It was great. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Pick up your Audible book at RageShadowLegends.com. <laughs> My favorite champion is, of course, the Green Dragon. <laughs> and that's it for Shonen Archive, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you guys next time. Say goodbye, son. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>